here, I am going to tell you that there are six main types of reactions that you need to understand. Well, really I lie because within these six main types of reactions, there are other groups of reactions you need to understand. So it's a little more complex, but it's chemistry, so it's always a little more complex. So some reactions are reactions where we put things together. We call those synthesis. If it burns, we call it combustion. It makes uh, CO2 and water are the two common, um, the two products. Decomposition means a single compound is breaking apart into simpler compounds or basic elements. Single displacement, one element replaces another from a compound, and we often you know, write these as a general format, like a single element displaces another from a compound. So A would displace B, so now you have AX, but you've still got to have B, and it's going to be by itself. So the fifth kind of reaction is double displacement. These are always two ionic compounds, and the ion is going to uh, appear to switch places. What's really happening is you're going to be forming an insoluble precipitate, or you have some other something, uh, some other reaction that pulls two of the ions together and removes them from the aqueous environment. Uh, double displacement reaction. Six, the formation of ligands. That's one that's going to be new to a lot of you. And did I say six? Well, how about basic organic reactions? And if you look at the website, there's a whole section on four basic organic reactions that you should know. So within synthesis, uh, we have this general format. Uh, these could be elements or compounds being put together to make something more complex to give often one new substance. At least one of the products, if there's more than one, has to be more complex than either of the reactants. Now there are several specific kinds of synthesis reactions you need to understand. For example, if you take a metal plus oxygen, it may happen at a low temperature, may happen at a high temperature, you know, whatever, however it happens, it would be the metal. So if you have sodium and oxygen, you're going to be making sodium oxide, and the formula is going to look like this. And to balance it, we're going to have to do something like this. That's what it means by a metal and oxygen making a metal oxide. That's one kind of synthesis reaction. Got that? Good. If you have a nonmetal and oxygen, you're going to make a nonmetal oxide. And so let's think of one here. Uh, hydrogen plus oxygen making H2O. And so that's a synthesis reaction. A metal and a nonmetal produce a salt. Now, when we study acids and bases, we'll study that usually this is done through a neutralization reaction. Um, and so we end up with salts like sodium chloride. Um, and we may have formed the sodium chloride from of uh, reacting pure sodium with per, pure chlorine. But uh, another way we look at this is the sodium is um, the conjugate acid of a base, sodium hydroxide, and the chloride is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. And when we put those together, we get a salt. And we'll look at that in a little more detail. Metal oxides plus water make metal hydroxide. So if you have calcium hydroxide, for example, oops, excuse me, calcium oxide is a metal oxide. And if we combine that with water, 
we're adding a metal oxide and water, and we will make the metal, here's the metal, so it'll be Ca and hydroxide, and then we'd have to balance the equation. That's the metal hydroxide that's produced. If you have a non-metal and oxide, uh, excuse me, a non-metal oxide and water, you'll make an acid that contains oxygen or an oxyacid. Uh, so one thing that you've uh, watched us do in class a lot is to have this non-metal oxide, carbon dioxide, and we combine it with water, and we're going to make carbonic acid, H2CO3, carbonic acid. And so that's the oxyacid that contains uh, oxygen. So those are some notable examples of types of synthesis reactions. So be sure you are able to look at and do any of those synthesis reactions. Combustion reactions. Well, this is a little simpler. Oxygen combines with a substance and releases energy in the form of heat and light. And uh, we think of this as burning. So, you know, common examples would be like methane. Oops. Methane combines with oxygen to produce CO2 and H2O. Oxygen um, combines with a substance and releases energy in the form of heat and light. We call that burning. But uh, we could also have what's just below carbon um, <clears throat> or close to carbon on the periodic table. There are other elements that we could do this with. Um, you could burn sulfur and have a combustion reaction. There are other things you can burn and have combustion reactions. Decomposition. Now, I think there may be as many as six specific kinds of decomposition reactions that you need to understand. But decomposition reactions are always going to be a compound that then splits apart into simpler components. The breaking down of a substance decomposition. And so uh, if you have a metal oxide and you heat it or you cause this reaction to occur, occur in some way, you're going to get a metal and oxygen. And so um, for example, we have taken this metal oxide and in the presence of ox and the presence of aluminum powder, we have taken rust, and reacted it and produced iron and oxygen. <clears throat> Actually, iron and aluminum oxide. Maybe that isn't a really good example. Uh, if we were just to heat this, we could heat it and break those bonds between the iron and oxygen and make iron and oxygen. So that's the kind of reaction we're talking about here, one kind of decomposition. If you have a metallic carbonate and you heat it, you will make metallic oxide and carbon dioxide. So here's a metal, right? So what's the metallic carbonate? Um, uh, we're going to call it uh, metal carbonate. There we go. Na2CO3 um, CO3 carbonate. Na2CO3, when it's heated, you will make... The metal oxide, so the metal is Na oxide, so that would be Na2O. And what else do we make? Carbon dioxide. <laughs> and um, you have carried that out in your first year chemistry. That is one of the reactions you would have done. And um, if you have a metal hydrogen carbonate, uh, that would, in this case, I'm just going to stick with the same metal, hydrogen, carbonate. You may recognize that as baking soda. So if you take this metal, hydrogen, carbonate, and you heat it, you will make the metal carbonate and water and carbon dioxide. So what's the metal? Well, the metal here is sodium. It says the metal carbonate, so that's... Um, 
and water and carbon dioxide. If you heat a metal, metal chlorate, so metal chlorates would be things like NaClO3, sodium chlorate. If you heat that, you're going to make the metal chloride. The metal we had was sodium and chloride, and you're going to make oxygen. Now, one thing you will find out that is when you do this, and we balance this equation, you'll see we get a fairly large payout of oxygen. And so uh, this large amount of oxygen means that this oxygen can support combustion. And so these kind of compounds are uh, often used for things like black powder, make things that are going to blow up or burn very rapidly because there are large amounts of oxygen uh, available to support rapid, rapid, rapid combustion. Metal nitrates, when heated, make oxygen and also uh, then serve as a source of combustion. So if we're talking in the metal here, sodium and nitrate, NO3, when heated, makes metal. There's our metal. It could be any metal, but we're just using sodium as our example. Lithium, potassium, copper, iron, any metal. Uh, makes the metal nitrite. There's metal nitrite and O2. Um, so you'll see once again that in the process of balancing this, uh, you're going to get some oxygen, not quite as much as in the previous example. Let's see, to balance this, um, we're going to have to put a 2 here and a 2 here. And there, that's it, isn't it? It's balanced. 6 oxygen, 6 oxygen. And if you have a peroxide of any kind, a metal peroxide will also decompose to produce the metal oxide and oxygen. So in this case we're talking about hydrogen per oxide, but if this were a metal, you uh, like sodium, you would get the same reaction in that you would get that material. In this case it's going to be hydrogen and oxygen um, compound and of course O2. Single displacement reactions always have some single element and some compound. And the single element displaces the uh, one of the other elements from the compound. Now, if this single element is a metal, it's going to displace the metal from the compound. If this single element is a nonmetal, it's going to displace the nonmetal from the compound. So a single element replaces a similar element that is part of a compound. Um, this can only happen if there's a single element that is more active than the similar element in the compound. So you can use the activity series uh, that will be with your test to determine whether or not a single displacement reaction will occur. So you may want to take some time to review using that activity series. And you also want to be sure that if these are occurring in aqueous solution, that you watch this ion that's going to be um, a common ion. And if it's in aqueous solution and soluble, those that common ion will um, be a spectator ion, and it will cancel out or not be included in the reaction.